Colonel, I appreciate your time again, uh, obviously, in these early hours of the morning for you. Um, you. You heard that man there, you know, asking the question of, of, about his family who are dead. What did they do to deserve this? What is your reaction, Colonel, to these accusations that you hear that the strikes on the Jabalia refugee camp uh, are hitting civilians and amount to a massacre by the IDF? Hi, Erin. Sad images, really, at the human level. When I watch it and I detach myself from the reality that we are facing, I see sad events and I see people suffering, and that is not something that we intend to. Um, what I could say to that man, without even a drop of cynicism, is you should have evacuated you and your family. You shouldn't have been there. That doesn't mean that we wanted to kill anybody. It just means that when we warned Palestinians two weeks ago to evacuate that specific area because there was going to be major combat operations, they should have heeded the warning and they should have left. The sad reality that is unfolding now is that the civilians in Gaza are paying the price for the atrocities of Hamas. We are fighting a battle here to defend ourselves. We cannot allow a situation for Hamas to continue to exist after the atro atrocities of October 7th. And in order for us to be able to safeguard ourselves, mm. we have to eradicate Hamas wherever they are, even if they're hiding in tunnels underneath uh, populated areas. Uh, Colonel Conricus, so the point, though, about wanting them to leave, I mean, these are 100,000 people in a refugee camp. By definition, they lack resources. Where were people like that supposed to go? Was it even reasonable to tell them to go? I mean, they don't have anything yes. to begin with. No, no, that is unfortunately not accurate at all. And if you let me, I'd, I'd like to explain why. If you look at the footage that you're showing, you don't see tents. This isn't some makeshift refugee camp. These are permanent dwellings of Palestinians living in a Palestinian-controlled area under Palestinian rule. These aren't refugees no more than my grandparents are refugees who came from Poland and Morocco in 1948. This is the time scope that we're talking about. These aren't refugees, and it's not a refugee camp any more than half of the population in modern Israel are refugees of the expulsion of from Arab countries in 1948. So, yes. Colonel, I understand your point. Evacuate. I understand your point about permanence. I'm sure King Abdullah would say the same about refugee camps of Syrians uh, in, in Jordan and, and Egypt, the same about other refugee camps they have. But while I understand the point you're making about the permanency of the residents, they are poor. And they can't leave. To move. Aaron, yes, they could. They could. They made a decision. Now, it does. the fact that they made the wrong decision does not make them a target. That is not what I'm saying. I am saying that we warned ahead. Everybody in Jabalia knows, the same guy who was holding the page, listing the unfortunate deaths in his family, I feel for him, but he knows that Hamas is there. He knows mm -hmm. that the place is full of what they call Mukawama, resistance. All of them know it. And they so, know that they will be fighting there. And they know that the safest place for them to be is not there. It's in the South. So let me ask you a question about, though, how you know what you're striking. Because I know you put out a statement today, the IDF did at least, Colonel, regarding the second strike, right, the second strike in 24 hours in Jabalia camp. And, the, and a quote from it is that, based on precise intelligence, IDF fighter jets struck Hamas command and control complex in Jabalia. Uh, Colonel, of course, we all know Israeli intelligence failed in the lead up to the Hamas terror attack on October 7th. How do you know that Israeli intelligence is right now? Erin, I think you asked the same question three weeks ago, and I think I'll, I'll provide the same answer that I'm saying now. We are basing our military operations off intelligence. We continue to monitor their communications. We continue to listen and see what they're doing. We issue information, not claims, but we issue names, faces, and positions of dead Hamas commanders and key operatives. We do that because we do still have excellent intelligence, very granular intelligence of what they are doing, of their whereabouts. Granted, I, have, I cannot argue with what you said, the first part. Yes, we failed on October 7th, clearly, and that needs to be investigated. But definitely, that does not imply that uh, our intelligence is wrong. On the contrary, we, sp we continue mm. working based on that intelligence, and we generate more intelligence. Our ground troops are there in friction with the enemy. Every encounter, when we meet the enemy, we defeat them, even if we have casualties, and then mm. we generate more and more. 
targeting intelligence. All right. Well, Colonel Conriquez, thank you very much. I appreciate your time tonight.